Hello everyone, welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel, Truth First Christianity in a Post-Christian Country, where we take the objective and factual about the Christian faith and separate it from the subjective and traditional for the benefit of our faith walks. Today I'm excited because we're talking about the Nephilim, and today I'm going to give you 10 of the most intense proofs for their existence outside of Scripture. Via archaeology, number one in the Alkali Flats are the Great White Sands, New Mexico. In 1931, a government trapper found tracks that belonged to giant human beings. A year later, an expedition of four professionals returned, including a trapper and the supervisor of the Lincoln National Forest. During their expeditions, they found a total of 13 footprints crossing a historic desert basin near the San Andreas Fault. And despite the giant size of the tracks, the observers on the team were convinced they had been left by humans. They noted, quote, the print was perfect and even the instep was plainly marked. The prints were 16 to 22 inches long, 8 to 12 inches wide. The strides between the steps were 5 feet and the distance between the left and right foot were over two feet in stride. The site had great interest among researchers and it was revisited in 1972, 1974, 1981. During each expedition, more tracks were found. The intrigue was great and even the US Army investigated and reported. They said, quote, there's no doubt the tracks were that of a living creature. Their speculation ranged from camels to 10,000 year old mammoths <laughs> the only problem is that there was no dispute that they were human tracks, or at minimum, bipedal creatures. Number two, in June 1968, William J. Messer discovered what may be the oldest footprint yet discovered. While an amateur, his find was easily confirmed to be a sandaled shoe stepping on a trilobite. This was significant because it turned the establishment on its head. Either a shoed traveler from 300 to 400 million years ago traveled the planet or a shoe-wearing biped had once visited the planet long before the scientific narrative believes. How do hundreds of years old trilobites interact with a sandaled biped when shoes up to that point were several thousand years old at best? Number three, 1882, Carson City, Nevada, the yard of the state prison. Human footprints wearing shoes were found during quarrying operations in mines there. The prints were from 18 to 20 inches long and about 8 inches wide. The stride of the bipedal walkers were 2 or 3 feet. Many other animal tracks were found along with these, but uh, wiped out what was previously known because some of the ages were found to be 2 to 3 million years old, if such dating is to be trusted. Um, so, unable to believe the evidence over their uh, evolutionary pre-commitments, uh, institutions decided these must have been bipedal monkeys and they balanced themselves with their tails to hold themselves up. Only problem, no tail tracks. Number four, in Pershing County, Nevada, a hand-sewn leather sandal was found in Triassic Limestone of Fisher Canyon by Alfred Knapp in 1927. The thread used to make the shoe was a finer thread than was used to make shoes in 1927. This work was dated to between 180 and 220 million years ago. Uh, Brad Steger, Mysteries of Time and Space is where that story appears. Number five, human skulls with horns? Yes, I'm not joking. They were found in what are called burial mounds in Sayre, Bradford County, Pennsylvania in the 1880s. Um, other than the horns, the skeletons were anatomically normal, save for the seven foot tall frames. Uh, it was estimated they were buried around 1200 AD. Among those having made the discovery was a Pennsylvania State historian and several uh, disciplinary antiquarians. 
uh, some Presbyterians, two professors, A.B. Skinner and W.K. Moorhead. Uh, some of the bones were sent to the American Investigating Museum in Philadelphia where they uh, seem to have disappeared. Seems to be kind of a reoccurring story with these things. Number six, in 1891, excavation of a large burial mound in Ohio yielded the skeleton of a giant wrapped in copper armor. The remains were found at a depth of 14 feet in a mound 500 feet long and 200 feet wide. Number seven, in 1879, a skeleton nine feet eight inches tall was recovered from a stone burial mound in Brewersville, Indiana. Fearing that the find would be taken and disappear, the owner of the property kept the skeleton until a flood swept the bones away later, and that's quite a tragedy. Number eight, in Clearwater, Minnesota, in 1888, another burial mound, which uh, were starting to yield predictable finds, uh, revealed a wealth of giant skeletons, this time seven, with double rows of teeth in the upper and lower jaw, as was described of Goliath's brothers from Gath in the Bible. Each skeleton was found in the sitting position facing the nearby lake. Number nine, one of the most famous finds was that of the 1921 Lovelock Cave, about 20 miles southwest of Nevada. One of the characteristics of the off-found giants was red hair. The local Paiute natives, uh, after they removed the guano-rich resources from the cave, they found a six-and-a-half-foot mummy still with the fiery red hair, um, and the Paiute called these people the uh, Setakas, the giants, and their once mortal enemies. Uh, in their history, the natives had joined forces in the region to drive the tribes of giants out. Several major uh, universities came to study uh, this cave and do research and uh, see what they could conclude. Uh, many additional native artifacts were um, were found and cataloged, yet interest in Lovelock continued. In the subsequent years, more red-headed giants were found there. Um, skeletons ranging from six and a half to nine or ten feet. And that's from the Nevada State Historical Society, quarterly fall 1975. Number ten, the Paracas Skulls. In more recent decades, another layer to the noteworthy number of giant skeletons found around the world are the connections made with megalithic structures, pyramids across ley lines using building techniques that still can't be reproduced today. And I have to give credit to people like L.A. Marzulli for this work uh, because they've just done fantastic in conveying all this material to us anyway. A noteworthy number of giant skeletons found around the world uh, have connections with these megalithic structures, the writings of the Holy Bible, and what are called elongated skulls. Now, there's a phenomenon called head binding where an average size modern human will mimic this feature with boards and bind their heads. I'm not talking about that. Um, particularly in South America, they're finding more and more of these legitimate elongated skulls authentic to various periods of history. The skull cap reveals a different uh, form than the modern human, and the DNA tests show no known human connection. However, a uh, more mainstream DNA analysis was done because the career of the first DNA anal analyst was put in jeopardy when they found something so contrary to mainstream, and this second one said, sure enough, okay, Western European and Middle Eastern. So, um, those are only 10. There are literally dozens. And there's stories about the Smithsonian covering these things up. Um, there are some stories that are very hard to vet about uh, the finds of Noah's Ark in the mountains of Ararat in Armenia. Um, even one fascinating tale exists where they found two nine-foot sarcophagi one with a man, one with a woman who didn't have belly buttons, and it was believed that they were Adam and Eve. I don't know what the veracity of these stories are, but they sure are fascinating. The ones we shared today are it. They are archaeology. 
not hard to uh, not hard to disprove. It's just that unfortunately they don't become part of the mainstream narrative because they go against what the mainstream narrative tells us history is. And this, if it's true, is just more veracity for the biblical claims. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. We appreciate every subscriber here. Buy my books if you don't mind. Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. Check out our Teespring store. I'm uh, adding new material as we go all the time. And uh, I would appreciate your support in those two ways. Also, Evangelist Nick G. Bit shoot. Evangelist Nick G. Facebook and Twitter. May your work today bear fruit. God bless you and thanks.